Well, I stopped talking and I sold more on F&I. I've been doing this for over 30 years, this F&I thing. And I gotta tell you something. I wish I learned this hack a long time ago because it would have made me a lot more money. By the end of this video, you're gonna learn exactly what I'm not talking about and how to talk less and make more money. So are you ready? Let's get into the details. I call it verbal vomit. And what I mean by verbal vomit is when you go through a menu presentation, you just throw up all over the customer, telling them all the reasons why they should buy this and all the reasons why they should buy that. You probably start your presentation off with, let me go over the warranty with you, tell you what you have, what you don't have, what you should get. And some of you probably never even did an interview with the customer or an introduction and learn some of their driving habits and stuff. And you make these recommendations and you say all these things without knowing anything about the customer. So I call that verbal vomit. You're throwing up all over the customer. You're just talking way too much. The other thing is when you talk too much, what I'm saying here is that you put a lot of emphasis on products that aren't really relevant in the customer's mind sometimes because you don't know what's relevant in the customer's mind. One of the best things you can say at the end of a presentation, if you do the right presentation, is which option works best for you. So you gotta learn to talk less. And you'll say more by talking less. And here's what I'm talking about. There's a thing called pace floor. I want you to think about that for a second. If I were to ask you, hey, let's go to lunch, you're probably wondering who's gonna pay for it. But if I were to say it this way, hey, let's go to lunch, I'm paying for it, without hesitation, you say, hey, let's go. Pace floor really make a difference in the customer's mind. After all, if someone else is paying for it, they don't have to. So rather than go through this whole big explanation of what these products do in the beginning, save the benefits for after you ask the customer which option works best for them. Just tell the features. It's a telling presentation. You're gonna get through the presentation a lot quicker. We have this wonderful menu and it's designed to give every product to every customer every single time. But if you spend too much time on one or two or even three products, you never get to what's really relevant in the customer's mind. Sure, you're probably saying, I sell a lot of service contracts, I sell a lot of Gap, but that's all you're focused on. What you need to do is you need to give the customers choices and options that are on that menu, on that piece of paper, or on that digital menu, on the computer, whatever you use, or the tablet. You gotta let the customer realize what's available to them. And if you say things in the right manner, it will get into the customer's mind. For example, what does a service contract do? It simply pays for mechanical electrical breakdowns for a certain period of time and mileage. What does tire and wheel do? Tire and wheel pays for damage to their tires. Should they be damaged by a road hazard? You probably want to explain what a road hazard is. A pothole and debris in the road. Key replacement? What's that do? It pays to reprogram, replace, or repair keys that become lost, stolen, or broken. That's what it does. It pays for things. The only thing that really protects the vehicle, seriously, it's fabric and paint care. After all, it does protect the interior and exterior against the elements. Acid rain, bird darpings, tree sap, the interior against any water, oil-based stains. It will even fix minor rips, tears, and burns. <laughs> now I sound like a Ginzu salesman. And you get a bamboo steamer with it. My point here is, if you simply tell customers what the product does, feature only, and save the benefits for after you ask them which option works best for you, you're gonna close a lot more. That's what I found out. I've been doing this a long, long time. And it wasn't until about five or six years ago that I realized all I gotta do is just tell them it pays for this and it pays for that. And they just lay down for it a lot of times. I mean, think about it. Who doesn't want someone else to pay for it? So how a customer interprets what you're saying has a lot to do with what they're gonna buy at the end. So remember, service contract pays for mechanical electrical breakdowns. Tire and wheel pays for damage to your tires and wheels. Key replacement pays to reprogram and replace the keys. Gap pays the difference between the insurance settlement and what you owe to the bank. And it pays your deductible. Paintless dent removal. Pays to have a technician go out to your home or office and remove those unsightly dings. Windshield coverage pays to have a technician or a windshield repairman go out to your home or office and repair those small cracks or chips. Remember, it pays for. Another thing that we make a mistake on is that we talk in terms of you and your. In other words, we say when you hit a pothole or when you total your car or when your vehicle breaks down. I guess your vehicle breaks down. That doesn't make that much of a difference. But think about when you say when you hit a pothole or when you total the car or when you lose your keys. The customer in their mind can say, I'm not going to lose my keys. Last thing I'm going to do is hit a pothole. And I'm certainly not going to total my car. I'm not thinking about totaling my car. But if you talked in terms of the machine, in other words, it and the, when the tires hit a pothole, 
when the keys are lost, stolen, or when the vehicle is in a total loss situation, that makes a huge difference in the customer's mind. They don't have to, there's no denial. They're not saying to themselves, I'm not gonna do it. It's all about the machine. So keep it on the machine, keep it simple, keep it clean, and keep it straightforward. And you watch the result. I'm telling you, you're much better off telling them than not selling them. And save the selling for after you end your presentation. Doesn't matter whether you use one column, two columns, three columns, or four columns. First column that matters the most, and you've got to expose all the products, and you only have a certain amount of time to do that. So stop talking, talk less. Until next time, if you want to learn more about how to increase your closing percentages in F&I, and be surrounded by some of the best and biggest dealer groups or dealerships and F&I managers in the nation, all you got to do is press that link, productprep.com.